Dystopian novels have this way of tapping into our collective fear of the future. They magnify contemporary issues, blow them up to catastrophic proportions, and serve them back to us in a narrative that's both cautionary and gripping. You've got classics like 1984 Inches by George Orwell, which made it to the screen a couple of times, most notably in 1984. Go figure. The film runs parallel to the bleakness of the book, but lacks the depth and Orwell's immersive language that gets under your skin. It's like listening to a cover of your favorite song. It's good, but it's not the original. Then, take The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood, which was adapted into a Hulu series. It's a rare gem, one of those adaptations that stick to your bones. In some ways, the show expands on the book, fleshing out characters and backstories. It takes Atwood's red-clad world and adds layers to it that weren't in the original manuscript. Some purists might balk at the extra trimmings, but they add depth to the chilling tale Atwood penned. Brave New World by Aldous Huxley also got the TV treatment, but the reception was mixed. The Peacock adaptation tried to catch the essence of Huxley's work, but the novel's intricate social commentary and somber tone got somewhat lost in translation. It's one thing to read about the disquieting consequence of a pleasure-driven society, and another to watch a glitzy interpretation that feels a little too soap opera-ish. Fahrenheit 451 Inches has been through the Hollywood grind a couple of times as well. Ray Bradbury's masterpiece about a world where books are banned and firemen burn any they find was gripping on paper, mostly because Bradbury was a wizard with words, hyperbole intended. The HBO adaptation captured the aesthetic but struggled to convey the depth of the fireman Montag's inner revolution. Let's not forget The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins, which became a blockbuster film series. The transition to the big screen worked pretty well here. You lose some of the inner turmoil of Katniss, that first-person present-tense narrative that hooks you. But in return, you get the full visual spectacle of the Capitol and the games themselves. Walking Portland's rainy streets, buried in one of these books, you get a feel for the weight of their messages. When they transition to screen, sometimes that weight feels a tad lighter, perhaps repacked for easier consumption. Books allow for deeper contemplation, whereas their screen adaptations must capture our increasingly fleeting attention spans. Each medium offers a unique experience, like comparing the rich solitude of forest hikes in the Columbia River Gorge to the shared hustle of a concert downtown. Both great, just different. In the land of dystopia, whether on page or screen, the message often rings clear regardless of the medium. Beware the path we're on, lest fiction become a prophetic glimpse into our future.